This noontime Eyewitness News has continuing in-depth coverage of the Orlando nightclub massacre. We want to bring you up to date now. It is the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. 49 people were shot and killed early Sunday morning at Pulse, a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. 53 people also wounded this morning. Officials clarified that original number 50 included the shooter. Today they say they are actually dealing with 49 victims. That gunman identified as 29-year-old Omar Mateen, a man who claimed ties to ISIS during that attack. Just within the last hour, though, President Obama said it appears Mateen was inspired by extremist information, but it does not appear he was part of any larger plot. Mateen's family has said they're shocked by what happened and that their son's attack goes against their principles. Memorials, as you can imagine, being held all across the country, asking to stop the hatred against vulnerable communities. Local memorials include a vigil planned for tonight in Providence at the Alley Cat and Dark Lady Bar and Nightclub. And just in the past hour, officials announcing a vigil for 1.30 this afternoon on the campus in Kingston. Now at this hour, nearly all of the victims killed inside the nightclub have been identified, but only half of their names have been made public. Officials are still trying to contact the families of those remaining victims. We have, team, we have team coverage today for you from Rhode Island to Florida. We'll go to Steph Machado at the State House in a moment. First, let's get more in depth on those headlines with Eyewitness News reporter Kenneth Craig in Orlando. FBI agents searched for evidence Monday morning outside the Pulse nightclub. Police say the last of the victims have been removed. Authorities are now working to notify all the next of kin. Gunfire erupted in the crowded gay club just after last call Sunday morning. Police say an officer working at the club exchanged fire with 29-year-old Omar Mateen. Additional officers entered the club sparking another gun battle. The attacker then retreated to a bathroom with a number of hostages. Police say that's when Mateen called 911, pledging his allegiance to ISIS and claimed to have a bomb. Around 5 a.m., a SWAT team punched several holes through a wall and stormed the club. We believed uh, future loss of life was imminent, and that's why we reacted the way we did. Mateen, born in New York to Afghan parents, was a security guard with no criminal record. His father says the attack goes against everything he taught his son. I don't approve what he did. What he did was completely an uh, act of terrorist. The FBI had investigated him twice about possible terror ties, but cleared him. Authorities say they are following up on 100 leads. Many club goers managed to escape, but dozens remain trapped. Mina Justice's son, Eddie, hid in a women's bathroom with several others while he texted his mother. Trapped in the bathroom downtown. Please call police. I'm going to die. Eddie was confirmed dead this morning. More than 50 others were injured, many of them in critical condition. In response to the tragedy, hundreds of people lined up to donate blood. That was Kenneth Craig reporting yesterday's Target, a gay nightclub, is creating concern across the country. It is Pride Month, and here in Rhode Island, the state's getting ready for Pride Weekend. It just stays away. New at noon today, we just spoke with the head of state police and Providence Mayor Alorza about preps underway right now. Eyewitness News reporter Steph Machado is live in Providence with our continued local coverage. Rhode Island leaders are evaluating safety and security here in light of the shooting in Orlando. Of course, it happened at a nightclub, the type of venue so many Rhode Islanders visit, and it was a gay nightclub during Pride Month. And this weekend, Rhode Island Pride will be celebrating its 40th annual LGBT festival. Tens of thousands of people are expected to attend here in Providence. So we spoke to the mayor and the head of the state police about keeping people safe. And so I'm meeting with my public safety officials and we're redoubling our efforts to make sure everyone is safe and everyone can enjoy their time here in the city. We're going to have extra troopers at the events and we've also talked to um, the people who may believe they could be victims of this based on the victimization that happened in Orlando and trying to put people to make them comfortable and make sure that if there's copycats that we're as prepared as possible. And we also just spoke to the governor. She says she always attends Pride, but she said this year, in light of what happened in Orlando, it's more important than ever that she's at that parade supporting the LGBT community. We'll have much more on safety efforts in light of the Orlando shooting coming up tonight, starting live at 5. Live in Providence with the Mobile Newsroom, Steph Machado, Eyewitness News.